Do tariffs work? Well, I guess maybe they were incrementally helpful to get um, Mexico to focus on this issue and come up with a successful uh, deal that the president referenced. Um, I don't think it's going to be nearly as successful uh, as it relates to China because the issues are much more complex. Obviously, our relationship with those two countries is wildly different. Mexico is an ally, a border nation, a democracy, a market economy, and China is none of those things. So I don't think, Sarah, we can extrapolate from this experience to what we might see um, in China in the foreseeable future. Mr. Ambassador, how would you characterize the upshot of all of this? Is it a success or has there damage been done? What do you think? Well, well, I think uh, the president's threat to place uh, uh, tariffs on Mexico in the context of immigration was, was, was really n n not the best use of tariffs. And essentially what they announced uh, this weekend was programs that had been in some state of implementation uh, with an exclamation point. Uh, as you know, Remain in Mexico was something that was put in place uh, in November, December of last year and is still under judicial review. This appears to have been a bit clear in that Guatemalans uh, would be allowed to remain in Mexico while their asylum procedures were pending. Salvadorans and Hondurans would be uh, deported or remain uh, in Guatemala. Secondly, there was uh, the, the enforcement along the southern border, 6,000 National Guard troops. I think ultimately the, 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 uh, the proof is going to be in the implementation, which is going to be a real challenge. For the last handful of months, Mexico had been doing a pretty good job uh, in terms of enforcement and deportation. So this simply put an exclamation point on it with a provision to review in 90 days. So we'll continue to have that, uh, that overhang, that uncertainty. Uh, you know, throughout this period. I think the most effective use of the 90 days, quite frankly, would be congressional review of the authority granted the executive uh, to use tariffs in these sorts of situations, uh, a review of our asylum procedures, and a real hard look at the kinds of things that we can do jointly with Mexico in terms of development to address some of the factors in Central America that are uh, really the cause of this exodus of peoples uh, out of that northern triangle. Hmm. Uh, we'll see what, what Congress does. Do investors now need to watch apprehensions for the next 90 days to know if they're making progress or not? Carl, it's way, way past 90 days, right? Because what we've seen is the uncertainty that the ambassador just spoke to is not just as it relates to uncertainty on the southern border of Mexico. It's now the uncertainty that's created by the president with Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, uh, the Northern Triangle. But this is now the uncertainty in the markets overall, because the president has said he's willing to use tariffs for non-commercial matters with friends and foe alike. So how do you plan? How do you think about whether or not the president is going to use tariffs in your industry, with, in your country, when he's talking about he delayed the tariffs from uh, Asian and European car exports for six months? That may or may not come back. How do businesses plan over the long term, given that now uncertainty, given the president has been quite clear that he thinks it works and he's prepared to use it for commercial and non-commercial matters alike? How do you plan also for what's going on in China? I mean, is there anything to take away from this Mexico agreement that you can speculate could happen between I the U.S. Really, and China? I really don't think, Sarah, these things are really directly linked. I think one was an easier deal to get to. Clearly, some of these um, issues had been in the works for some period of time as it relates to border security with Mexico. The issue with China fundamentally, as we've talked about in the past, is what sort of reforms are they going to be able to make to their system and whether or not that's ultimately going to be um, acceptable to uh, the president. Mr. Ambassador, I mean, does this make Mexico safe again for U.S. companies who were looking to move their supply chains from China elsewhere where there's cheaper labor? Well, well, I, I think the uncertainty remains uh, because, as you know, Mexico had submitted the, uh, the trade agreement, the USMCA, to the approval uh, of their Senate the same day that this threat was announced uh, in Washington. Uh, Canada's on track to, uh, to move with the USMCA, and there's still a, a fair amount of uncertainty around USMCA in the U.S. Congress. But, but the larger point here is even if you bring USMCA to ground and get it approved, uh, does the tariff, does the president still see 
uh, these sorts of tariffs as a tool that can be used independently of whatever trade agreements we may have with Mexico. So, you mm. know, it, it introduces a level of uncertainty around tariffs independent of whatever trade agreements we might be able to, uh, to finalize that I think from a business standpoint uh, is simply not the kind of environment that creates a great deal of confidence around decisions with respect to supply chains and, is, and is additional investment in, well, in the North the American the platform. No, it's a good point, Ambassador. Stefan, just wondering, I mean, legally, if, the, if they do sign the USMCA, pass it, can the president still hang tariff threats over Mexico? He, he, he can. And this, to me, is the odd thing, right, which is you would have thought of all things we would have been in some level of equilibrium uh, with the Mexican as it relates to commercial and economic issues, having just completed this contentious <laughs> negotiation on USMCA, which his administration led.